Math 31, let's take a look at our last example together. So we are given h of x, this, this nice fraction, 4 over 3 minus the square root of 4 plus x squared. And we would like to turn it into the comp composition of two functions. Now, there are many answers out here. I'm actually going to do two of them just to show you, and they're not unique. There's, there's plenty more you could come up with. So I'm just going to kind of put a separation mark here, and I want to give you one option. And as I had said in the previous example, anything inside grouping symbols, and square roots are grouping symbols, those, those could be a pretty good indication of what your innermost function would be. So maybe in this case, I'm going to let g of x equal 4 plus x squared. Okay. And if I did that, then I could let f of x equal 4 minus the square root of x. Oops, 4 over, excuse me, 3 minus the square root of x. I, I misstated that. And let's check if that would work out. All right, so let me define h of x to be f of g of x. And let's see if this works. So this would be f of 4 plus x squared. And if I do that, that should then turn into, well, I will have 4 up top and 3 minus the square root of 4 plus x squared. Okay, that works. So that's one option. All right, and like I said, there are many out here. Let me give you another one. I'll, I'll put the word or here. So what if instead I had done g of x was the entire radical expression? Okay, that could have been my g. Maybe I picked that to be my innermost function. If I went that direction, then f of x would be 4 over 3 minus x. And let me show you how this would work. So now I'm going to do h of x, right? And that's still f of g of x. So this would be f. Well, g of x is the square root of 4 plus x squared. If I take square root of 4 plus x squared and plug it into my f function, this will be 4 over 3 minus the square root of 4 plus x squared. OK, so there's a different way of doing it. And there's quite a few more out there. You can go and try and figure out other ones, but these are not unique answers. They are just, these are just two of many. And with that, that's going to round out section 3.3. Now I want to take a look back at where we started, what our learning outcomes were, and hopefully we're feeling like we accomplished some of those. So I hope we're comfortable doing the algebraic operations on functions, right? Just adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. All right, keeping in mind division always introduces a domain issue, right? We talked about composing functions, the domain of composed functions, and how to decompose a function into its component functions, right? So we have a whole bunch with composing functions and then just a little bit as a review for how to take functions and apply algebraic operations to them. And here you can see even in the beginning I talked about your three domain issues. It's going to come up time and time again. Fractions where the denominator is zero, radicals with an even index and a negative radicand, and logarithms where the argument is zero or a negative number. All right, so with that, we're going to head on over to 3.5, where we're going to take a look at transforming some functions. We're going to shift things up, down, left, right, and stretch them and reflect them. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.